we got a great guest that we've been looking forward to all day. Um, really excited to kind of get into everything with this guy, Mr. Tony Harnell. What's up, brother? What's happening, guys? Dude, man. Not too much, man. You enjoying yourself so far? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Good. Man, we actually have a mutual friend, uh, Miss Cassandra Sotos. Uh-huh. That, yeah, she um, was a guest on our, our episode uh, probably like two or three episodes ago. But she's also a personal friend of ours, too, man. Yeah. So we wanted to make sure that... She's good people, yeah. She's really good, man. Yeah, yeah so it's yeah, awesome. Yeah, she was the person... She's dude. like my little sister. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Man, she, uh, she introduced me to... The Tony Harnell and the Wildflowers featuring Bumblefoot record. And I got to tell you, man, we were... So good, dude. It's so good. I love that record. That she record plays really, great on that, too. Oh, man. But my wife and I were driving back from a, a road trip uh, last just last week, man. I was listening to it. I was, I was going down the Ohio Valley. And just that whole record is so fucking tasty, man. Thank you. Uh, not only is it honestly one of my like favorite just vocal performances I've ever, I've ever heard like your vocals are insane on that wow thanks uh, really I, true. I really appreciate that oh yeah no people are always you know it's nice that they like anything of mine but you know <laughs> the, most people always talk about like the first record or something and there's been like almost 30 so it's kind of like oh come on oh uh, yeah like, yeah Dude, no, Par- Paralyzed is a fucking awesome song, man. Yeah, I Just actually like want to do that electric, that. I think. Yeah. Find a way of, of uh, you know, amping that up a little bit, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Thank you. Well, just to give you a brief ba- brief background on us, man, we're a clothing and lifestyle apparel brand first and foremost, but we're both musicians, and so we started this company with a message to like encourage other artists and creators to like really push past fear and doubt and go for what they want. Mm, so a I lot of the like the the designs are aggressive on purpose to try to like signify the just like the internal war of Might any type one of, of creative pursuit. Well, dude, we we'd love to give you one, man. So yeah, whatever yeah. one you like. Pick whatever yours. flavor you want, man. Yeah. So we were noticing, man, a lot of our artist friends would kind of like abandon their journey pretty early, a little premature. Yeah. And so we wanted to start a podcast that was like an educational platform to I maybe give them some more insight on, um, you know, how they can move forward in their journey. So I'd just love to get some insight from you, man, on like how maybe networking or marketing or any of like the like the business steps you've really acquired over the years that have really helped you. I would love to hear more about that. Is it about business, though, or is it about attitude with a lot of people? It's about attitude. You know, I think a lot of the reason people stop is because, you know, I've said it's occurred to me. I've got uh, I I got sober a year and a half ago. And uh, through that journey, a lot of perspective comes into, you know, your head gets clear and you start thinking very differently about things. It's occurred to me. It's an it's nothing new, but. It really has occurred to me, how would people actually live their lives if they truly were not concerned about what other people think? Now, that's a common cliche, and people say it all the time. I don't care what people, you do care what people think. You absolutely do. But if you can really live like you don't care what people think, and of course, not doing anything on un, you know unethical or whatever, and not hurting anybody. But if you can really live your life the way you want to, um, that's that that's a life changer right there. And I think that if if a lot of if young artists could approach this business and this profession with that attitude in mind, they would get so much further because all. I would say probably all or 99% of the really big artists, do you really think they cared? I mean, if you really examine the really big ones, I mean, can you imagine what <laughs> if Freddie Mercury cared about what people thought when he was writing Bohemian Rhapsody? Uh, dude. No, we would be right. missing one of the greatest pieces of music ever. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Yeah, because none of that made sense for the time. The record company hated it. The record company it. hated it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they thought it was garbage. Yeah. They were like, Critics well, what are we going to do with it? Yeah. So, Timeless song. You've got to have that, um, you know, that, that, you've just got to have, you've got to develop that. You've got to develop a thick skin and you've really got to develop your own, when you have those those exciting moments in your own head where you say, I really want to do this, or you have those really big inspiring moments that every, or artists should have them. If they don't, they need to work toward having more of those, but most artists have those. Run with those. 
those are the moments that are going to define you if you don't let someone and you know snuff them out and don't tell everybody what you're doing all the time. Just do yes, it. Yes, dude. Oh my god, yeah, that's such stay great quiet. Advice. Yeah. Stay yep. quiet and stay focused. That's and, it, man. And let people hear it or see it when it's ready for them to see it. Get or get get people you trust. Like, you know, maybe your band or people you're working with. That's, you know, fine to help you with your, you know, to see your art, help you uh, get your art to, to your vision and and see it through, but People that post on social media about every little thing they're working on, yeah, I do it too, but I'll be vague. I'll say, I'm having a meeting today. I'm not going to say anything that might not happen. Right. Yeah. Maybe it won't happen, you know. Um, so it's, it's, we're, we're at a place right now where we sort of feel like we need content all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's, there are times in your, a month might go by where not a lot is going on. You have to be creative throwback flashback yeah. um you know uh pick a day and go do something go to a show just so you have some content take a picture totally. with somebody um write something that you think might inspire people don't be afraid to don't show the embarrassing private parts of your life which a lot of people do instead open your heart and show the private parts in a way not you know what I'm saying yeah, I don't mean yeah, that yeah, yeah. Uh, of your heart so open your heart to people more from an inspiring way like I do that about once a month maybe twice sometimes but a lot of that's for me too you know yeah. that's part of my journey is if I have an epiphany and I think it's helping me that I had that epiphany I want to share it and maybe it'll help other people that's so important, man. And don't you feel like that that's the true vulnerability? Because vulnerability has become like this buzzword. And I feel like what you were saying to, to your earlier point, don't share the like private embarrassing parts of your life thinking it's vulnerability. Take those moments that have really truly inspired you that are a, of a more open emotional nature and yeah. share that in, in the <clears throat> spirit of like trying to help people move forward in yeah. their own journey. Yeah. And don't be afraid of having your own voice. Um, some people get real cheesy about it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what other people. It doesn't matter what other people think. Stop posting hospital pictures and start posting things that your heart, that you're feeling, that you go, man. You know, if you have any of those moments, you know, those are the things. Write those down. They could be a song. They could be a post. They could be just a way for people to go, wow, this person is. Um, um, you know, you're you're trying to like connect to people. That's what songs do. That's what you. That's what I do as a singer. I'm trying to, as a singer, I'm trying to. My job is to draw people into the song. I want them to. I, I want through my expression to get them between that and the lyrics. I want the two things in combination to bring you in to make you feel something. And if you're not feeling anything, I'm not doing my job as a writer or a singer. Dude, man, that is such powerful advice, man. Seriously, that's awesome. Yeah, dude, I I gotta ask you though, when when um, just sidetrack real quick, but when you were making that record with Bumblefoot and the Wildflowers, your wife sang on that, was that right? Yeah, okay. my ex-wife. Yeah. Your ex-wife. Yeah. Okay, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, was that a, just a, a fun record? Because I, I've listened to your stuff in in the past, and I, that record was she just did she did two records with me. She did also she? did this. Uh, I did one called the Mercury Tony Harnell and the Mercury Train. Okay. That was 2010. Yeah. Oh, okay. cool, man. But th that record was just so different um, mm. for me man I mean like there's almost like tribal beats in it and yeah. just the, the was that like just you're doing would you yeah. like I want to do something fucking different and we just I just like I've gone into records before with no constraints and yeah. I think that's what was what the hardest thing about the TNT thing was was there was there were always expectations of it's got to sound like the last thing that was successful whether that was last year or 10 years or 20 years ago um Ronnie and I have done records where we went in and said we don't care we want to make and we did that in the 90s with um, Firefly and Transistor we made two very different records because we just that's what we were wanting to do um, with with the Wildflower stuff and other things I didn't have anybody telling me to sound like anything and yeah. it was I did it through Pledge Music when they were Pledge was it was a great yeah. you know it worked out really well for me yeah <clears throat> but uh yeah, I mean, it was. I produced it. I wrote, co-wrote all the songs, and uh, there was just, you know, to me, it's like, look, when TNT stopped for a bit in '92, I had offers to make 
uh, to put a new rock thing together. And instead I did Morning Wood, which was a complete departure that, but I wanted to do it because I, it was important to me even back then to establish myself as not just a metal screamer or, or I, I never really, I hope people didn't just see me that, but it was really about kind of showing my influences. And so there were Eagle songs on there. There was Super Tramp. There was uh, a lot of different things that I grew up with that um, shaped me as a singer. Yeah. And there wasn't any of the later stuff that shaped me, like Priest, and uh, you know, there wasn't even any, even any Zeppelin on there. It was all kind of '70s. I guess you could almost say like soft rock in a way, which was a yeah. big part of my early influence. You know, wow. leading into stuff like Journey and Foreigner and stuff. Yeah, before I got m- metalized, you know. But I've always kind of had that. There's just so many things I like to do. I posted a Glenn Campbell song that I sang on my on my page uh, on the. Uh, it was either his, was the anniversary of his death, I think it was, um, the other day. And, um, you know, he was my first idol. So, oh, I mean, yeah, I started yeah. with that and then went through all sorts of different things. Um, so, it, it just happened to be, the way I look at it, that I, I had some level of success with TNT, but it could have been anything. It just happened to be that. So, that's now what people have in their mind. And so, as an artist, I'm kind of like, but wait, there's so much right, more. There's so yeah. much more. Yeah. Especially yeah. the labels, you know, because every time they offer anything substantial, there's always a little tag on it that says, but it's got to sound like classic TNT. You know, it's like, here we go again. Like, we did that already. That exists. How yeah. about letting me, you know, don't yeah. you want to hear something new? I yeah. mean, the thing about the hard rock world that's frustrating is it's, it's probably one of the most confining worlds there is for there's sure. the, I don't know if it's it's a combo of the I'm not sure exactly why but they don't allow for the growth that you might see in alternative music I mean if you listen and, or even honestly if we go back to the Beatles if they didn't evolve <clears throat> from 63 or 4 whenever they first came out till 1969 yeah yeah I mean put on Abbey Road their last record go back to the first record put them back to back they're only eight years apart but it sounds like a completely different band oh it's a completely, completely different band, different band. and yeah, no one really. does that anymore yeah. no. that kind of but they were let's be honest they were changing oh, in front of well you guys weren't born but they were changing in front of our eyes I was just barely born but they were literally changing the face of rock in a, in a decade yeah it's so crazy they painted a whole canvas for everybody to use as the as how to make rock good rock songs and rock music but no one's doing that anymore I that know, hasn't really happened a shame, man. yeah it really is and do you think that's because of like mm-hmm. inner label bureaucracy well there aren't a and r guys anymore that are encouraging um artist artistic growth yeah they just want numbers yeah they want sales. oh yeah it's all about money it's not about artistic growth anymore yeah there is it hasn't been for mode. years yeah. yeah yeah for sure so the only way music the way i see it with the internet what's going on right now the way <clears throat> music will survive and thrive is that we have to get back to that somehow yeah yeah and maybe that maybe that's gonna be what ends up happening is when when no one can make money on this anymore maybe that maybe we all just have to sit back and go maybe we have to be artists again <laughs> yeah, that would idea, be nice. I, I, I mean, yeah. I, I know I have to. I know I have to wrap up. But you know, recently I had a, an epiphany of of making two records. More I've done, but you know, recently that I thought would appeal to people because I was towing the line, you know, and doing what I thought they wanted. And I think they one of them came out really, really great. But when you when you make a record like that and you feel like you're sort of sacrificing or compromising. And then people that they should like it critique it in a negative way. Then you're like, why am I bothering? I might as well do what I want. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I'm doing what they want, and it's not exactly what they like, why? Then then screw it. You know, I already then then they, maybe that's not where my heart is anymore. And and when they say let's re-record Tell No Tales, it's never going to work because it was a moment in time. You're capturing a moment in time. The energy, the 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 whole emotional. There's a lot that goes into making a record. It's not just press the button and sing. Right. And uh, that's, that's what I think people are, are forgetting. They're just, you know, that, that was then, this is now. 
different. I'm not with the same. You're, you're, you know, I say to them, "Hey, are you with the same girl? Are you to wear the same pants?" Also, maybe some of them might. Some right. of the, and yeah. some of them might be with the same girl. Good for them. Sure. But generally not. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's not the nature of life. Yeah. Right? No. Yeah. Well, where can people find you online, man? I'm all. I'm on Instagram, Tony Harnell official. Facebook, the same. Twitter, Tony Harnell. You'll find me. Uh, it, you know, there there aren't a lot of people with my name out there, but. Um, the verified pages are uh, Instagram's not yet, but the other uh, Twitter and Facebook are, so I'm easy to find. Perfect, man. Yeah, well, dude, man. this has been such a huge treat, man. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, man. You guys. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. I, I love what you guys are doing. I think it's really, really good. Yeah, it's important. 